camera speed. Hey, what's good, guys? This is your boy G Marcus TV back with a brand new video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I am bringing you guys Power Book 2, episode number one. And this is the first episode of season three. They came back hot. They came back harder than I expected them to come back. So, of course, as you guys, you know how we do on the channel. I give you guys a recap and I give you guys a review. So, let's get straight to it. It starts off with three months ago where Davis fences the ring that Reed gave him. That's the one that he took from Mecca. So, later on, a new character named Norma, she's introduced at an auction for the ring that Reed took from Mecca. So a guy buys it for over $5 million. Right after that, he goes to propose to his girl after they have a date. She says yes, it's a nice little date, and Norma and her crew show up. So they demand the ring back, and of course the guy is saying no. Why the hell, you know, like, get the hell out of here. He said, get out of here before I call the cops. So what they ended up doing was chopping the girl's hand off. The hand that she had the ring on, they chop the girl's hand off and she takes the ring off and put it on her finger so they end up killing them both it was a nasty nasty scene i'm loving how this this norma character is in here now reek and effie they clean out his room because he has to move of course from stansfield and effie is now in stansfield and wants to not be known as tyreek's girl so he's just telling her, yo, that's not the case. You're my girl, but that's not the case. It's going to be just fine. He tries to convince her that, but you can tell her that's not what she wants to be. Brayden's mom shows up with his sister and basically tells him, yo, y'all got to hurry up and bounce. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got to go. But the sister was actually cool. She wasn't nasty at all. Now we're at Monet and Monet is pissed off and she's sad that she lost Zeke. So Davis comes through and he tells her like, hey, since Zeke is dead and the penthouse was left for Zeke, it is now your penthouse. So she basically doesn't give a sh She just says, it is what it is. I don't give a damn. Sends Kane and Drew there to, to have the penthouse and just says, hey, you guys can stay there until I can find somebody that's going to buy it. But she was not with it. And Lorenzo, he was also like, yo, I'm not feeling that. I'm not moving in this house. And she just tells him like, hey, somebody talking to you? And right after everybody leaves, he just says, hey, you cannot be talking to me like that. And she just says, um, yeah, I can talk to you like that. I told you, you got to find Zeke's killer. Like, what have you been doing? I'll cut you some slack when you find Zeke's killer and you kill him. So Brandon now, he's at the corporate job, his family job now, and he's talking to his Uncle Lucas. And Uncle Lucas told him like, yo, Course Connect was a great idea. It was genius, but he's dumb for admitting it. And he also tells him like, hey, even though his father disapproves, he definitely approved it. Same time, a new character is introduced and her name is Kiki Travis. And she is bad. I'm not, it's not too clear to me if she's going to be Brayden's new assistant, but I know that she will be working with Brayden. Reek now, he goes to the Dean where he's having dinner with Rashad Tate. And he's basically like, yo, what's going on? It seems like I'm not able to like get a room inside of the school. So the dean just basically tells him, yo, the kids don't feel safe here with you being here. So yeah, it looks like you're not coming back to the school. So Tate actually steps in and defends Reek and just says, yo, you can't be doing this to a black man. Like you're treating this guy really bad. Like he's not guilty of anything. And if you continue this, when I do my campaign again, I'm going to put it out there that this school treats black people like So basically the dean just changes his mind and just says, okay, He'll get back in there, but Tyreek has to change his image. He cannot f*** around again because next time he will be thrown out for real. So after the Dean leaves, Reek just asks Rashad Tate, why are you helping me? I know you don't work for free. And then Rashad Tate just basically tells him, of course I'm going to need a figure for you later on. But he tells him, yo, get your sh together. Let people change their perspectives on you. Like, get it together. So Drew and Ev... They go to the penthouse where Kane is throwing a party and there's a new connect there named Kai. He won 60% of all the prizes. So Kane and Drew is just looking at him like, you can't be serious. Like, we can't give you 60%. But they try to negotiate and he's not trying to negotiate. He even fires a shot. He just says, yo, how's your fine mom doing? So that gets Kane really pissed off. Kane tries to buck at him, but of course his people is there, so he can't really do anything. Now Bash is talking about how Brayden messed up in court. 
So now he's trying to blackmail Tyreek, saying that he knows the real situation, he knows the story, that hey, he's gonna start snitching on Tyreek unless he gives him some money. So Tyreek is just like, yo, I'm broke. Course Connect is dead. I don't have no money, I'm tapped out. And he just said, well, that's not his problem. Get the damn money or else he's snitching. So Brayden, Reek, and Kane, they talk about business and they're at the penthouse. So Kane says he'll only do business with Effie. And this pisses off Tyreek. So they're about to get into it. And all of a sudden the lights come off and they get ambushed. So it's basically Norma and her crew. So they end up bringing Rocky in. I think she used to work with Mecca. That was one of his assistants. So they end up bringing her in, and as soon as she says Norma's name, she ends up shooting her in the head, killing her real, real fast. I was like, damn, that was quick. So it turns out that Mecca was basically her fiance and was part of her organization. So she wanted to know what happened, and they're all keeping quiet, because of course, they all know what happened, they're just not saying what happened. So it was saying that Mecca was good because he snitched on the rivals, and he had protection from law enforcement, so weak. And Kane, they're trying to convince us, saying, yeah, they got connections too. They can sell the product. They're good. They can make things happen. Like, just give them a chance. So she just basically tells them, like, hey, you guys have 30 days to make profit or you're dead. So Kane, now he tries to convince Lorenzo and Monet to work with Norma. And Lorenzo, he's on some hothead. He's not with it. And Monet, she just really doesn't give a shit about it. But he's really trying to convince them. And Lorenzo is not really having it. So now Reek goes to Davis and it shows an article of the couple who died over the ring. So Reek tells him about Norma and says that he needs help on basically getting some information on Norma. So David just says, well, you need to pay. So Reek just basically flipped the switch and was just like, dude, I could easily say how you had the ring and you fenced that ring. So basically he said, yeah, don't f around with me. Just get me the information, do what I tell you to do. Meanwhile, Sax overheard what was going on, but he didn't really hear much of it. So Becca, which is Brayden's sister, she's in a room with Diana, and they're at the same room that Tyreek stayed in. So it turns out that they're going to be staying with each other, and they both decide to keep it a secret from their families that they're staying together. So Professor Bennett is a new character on the show, and that's another fine piece of work so Reek, diane and effie they're all in her class and they're just talking about a subject about perspectives and truth and it's a new character that's a ta and his name is selim and he's actually in the class too so now bash goes to brayden and he starts making the same threats and brayden is feeling a little bit uneasy about that he's just like damn what i'm gonna do Kane now he talks to Effie and tells her that Reek is back in the game and did not include her. But of course she stood up for her man. I respect the fact. Was like yo, that's my man. Don't even worry about it. Cause I really think that Kane he's trying to hit that. Like you know what I'm saying? He's trying to get some of that. So David goes to the doctor about his brother and basically his brother needs a new liver. So Davis was like, okay, you can take his liver. So he was just asking for every possible way that he could save his brother's life. So the doctor just said there's an experiment that they could do, but he cannot be in prison doing the experiment. So he says, don't worry about it, just put him on the list. Right after that, he calls Sax and gets on Sax's about getting his brother out of jail. And he also asks him to find out who was looking over Mecca's penthouse. Jenny now, she asks Sax about the investigation and he has no answers for her. So she's annoying and she's disappointed. He says, yo, they haven't had sex in a while. She just says, yo, if you give me some information, then yeah, we'll, we can get back to doing that. But for now, yeah, I'm basically freaking dry. So Brayden ends up asking Kane to take out Bash, but Kane just says, no, you took out Lauren so you could actually take this guy out. Lauren was your friend and this guy is nothing to you. So you could actually take this guy out. So what they ended up doing was going to Bash's house, but Tariq was there first. So Tariq is there first, and he's talking to Bash, and Bash is just on him, saying, yo, give me the money, you know, give me some money or whatever. I'm snitching, because I know who you are. I can destroy your life. You are just like your father. He keeps talking, and Tariq is just getting pissed off, and he's saying he's not like his father. And he's like, no, you are just like your father. Your father was a thug in a Tom Forge suit. And you're a thug in a college hoodie. So Reek ends up taking a knife and he stabs him a couple of times in the stomach. He killed them so nasty. Oh my God, that scene was great. So Kane and Brennan, they come in. They help Tariq take the body out. So Jenny now, she finds out the detective Whitman was looking at Mecca's penthouse. So she's really, really pissed off. 
Same time, Blanca Rodriguez, so she pops up, and she basically says how Reek was at the penthouse the night that Mecca died. They both decided to team up with each other because Blanca was just like, yeah, they're about to go after Tyreek, but they don't want him to be known because they don't want to spook him out. So Effie confronts Reek about not putting her on to the new connect, and he basically says he does not want her to end up like Lauren. So of course, you know, she convinces him, you know, that's not going to be the case. We're going to be just fine. So reluctantly, he puts her in. So Rashad Tate, he has a hot chick on his side. He runs into the Professor Bennett, the new professor. So that turns out to be his own flame. I'm guessing they used to deal with each other back in the day. So he flirts with her with his eyes, and she basically shits on the girl that he's with and says, hey, a true leader keeps his eyes on the prize. So now they're all at Zeke's funeral. Diana is trying to do something nice for Monet, and she is not really trying to f with it. Meanwhile, Salim, he sits next to Dana, and he's trying to spit some game. And you can tell that this is definitely going to be somebody she messes around with. So I can't wait to see how this is going to unfold. So little Mo, she actually sings at the funeral. They say it's hard to say goodbye, one of those type of songs. And they reminisce, and Monet just feels like crap. Like, just reminiscing. It's like a real sad scene. Right after that, your boy Reed gives a speech about Zeke, saying that how he was a good guy. And basically, they tried to frame him for murder, and it's a really sad situation. At the same time, this guy just yells out that Reek actually did the murder. And he basically just says, yo, I'm going to just make sure I show you guys that I'm not this person you think I am. I'm going to change y'all's perspective on me. He goes to comfort Monet. She just basically says that she could only trust him, and he was the only one that was with her when Zeke got killed. Your boy Lorenzo, he comes in the room, he hears that, he sees that, and he's not feeling that at all. So now Whitman and Jenny, they talk, and she tells him to basically f*** off the case that they got taken care of. He's not authorized to be on the case. And Lauren comes up that basically she died by accident, so he's just really pissed off. He's like, yo, you really believe that? The girl did not die by accident. So she just tells him like, yo, Lauren is dead, end of story. So now Tariq and the crew, they go to Norma's warehouse and it's a lot of freaking product. It's more product than they have a scene, period. So basically they gotta move all that weight. They gotta figure out how they're gonna move all that weight. This Jenny goes to a house where there's a lot of cops outside, a lot of security outside. And she goes in there, and who is there with that back turn? You guessed it. Your girl, Lauren, is alive. She is alive. She turns around. She just asks her, how long do I have to pretend to be dead? And that's how the episode ended. This first episode that just came back, this was a great, great way to start off the season. Like, I give this a 10 out of 10. And if you guys follow me, you watch this channel, like, it's rare that I give 10 out of 10 for anything. The fact that this Norma character is a brand new enemy and came in, the way she is going, I love this character. Because they making the characters more serious, more powerful. The accent that she and her crew has, the rootless, the aggression, like, they are serious as f Another thing I would say is the fact that Lauren is still alive, that is crazy to me. I was not expecting that. I had suspicion like that she could be alive because we never seen the body, but at the same time, I'm like, she could be dead. You know what I'm saying? Like she really could be dead. Like they couldn't really made it look like a car accident. But the fact that she is alive, it is crazy. I love how they did that. Especially the fact that they're trying to cover it up. And I definitely love the fact that how they has have Monet. Like the acting for Mary J. Blige's character, Monet, is definitely gotten better. I really feel her pain. I really feel the character's emotions. So guys, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Let me know what your thoughts are on this episode. Let me know what your thoughts are for this season. Because this season is going to be a banger. To start off with this. So, thank you guys. Love you guys. It's your boy G Marcus TV. Signing off. Got it. That's a wrap.